Hey guys, uh, here with another uh, episode of Trainer Confidential. We're talking about body parts, obviously, is the series and legs today. Uh, here with Donnie again. How you doing tonight, Donnie? Hey, I'm doing all right, man. How you doing? I'm doing okay, doing okay. Uh, so legs, that's a pretty important one there. Uh, if you ain't got no legs, you you don't have no business up there at all. I mean, for the most part, that's half your body. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty much gone, gone, gone are the days in the seventies when. At the Miss America, you you got you got awarded for body muscle groups. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know you got best arms, best back, best chest, best legs, and uh and 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 bodybuilders back then some they were just specialists in one thing. They were either all legs and no upper body or arms and nothing else, and just to try to get the 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 the, uh, the, the awards for the for the for the muscle groups. Sure, you know, sure. But, you know, you, you still got to bring the rest of the package, you know? You, you do, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's symmetry, symmetry. It's all it's about, so. <laughs> yeah, so, how, I mean, how everything ties in, proportion, the whole nine yards. Yeah, and, and legs are really important in how they tie in, I mean, from all angles, too. So, I mean, that's that's the first thing I want to, I mean, just talk about the importance of, uh, of legs with the physique in a competition. Uh, uh, I mean, it, what, what let's talk about the importance of of the legs in competition physique <laughs> i mean you know uh uh let's just hear, i want to hear your thoughts on that kind of you, go know, from it's, there, it's, I think. you know you, you when you talk about the upper body you have days for like arms you have days for back you have days for chest and stuff actually you, you could really do this with legs too i mean there could be days for actually for, just for quads and days for hams and days for calves and days for for glutes you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's breakdown is almost comparable to the upper body. You know what I mean? Uh, so, so, you know, you're talking about what four different muscle groups, you know, yeah. that make up the legs. It's not just, it's not like, like the chest where it's just, you know, the pectoralis major and minor or, or the delts, you know, delts and traps. You're talking about glutes, quads, hams, and calves. You know, you can almost do a, almost a week's worth of training just, doing that you know what i mean sure sure so, you know it uh it you know so if your legs are not on par with your upper body i mean that that's that's a pretty profound effect on on the physique you know that we, we we say that that you know physiques don't uh, muscle groups don't necessarily have to enhance the uh the, the physique as long as it doesn't take away from the yes. physique but if yes. if your legs you know now and let me back just a little bit more be a bit more specific like if you've got bad legs, if you're like that, you're talking about glutes, quads, calves, and hams. All of them are subpar, so that's a lot of work. I can you can you can sit back and say, okay, look, your legs were your your quads, your calves look good, your glutes look good, but your hamstrings are flat, or your quads lack the sweep, or your calves are too small. But when you say you know your legs are bad, you're talking about below the waist. You know, yeah, that's a lot of work that needs to get done. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, uh, a lot of time, I mean, it, you know, it, it seems like, like with me, uh, calves was an issue for a while and, and calves was an issue for you too. Uh, uh, yeah, but me and you day. also, we had quads, we always had quads. So, uh, uh, but hamstrings is an issue for some people and quads. I mean, it, it depends on the, the person and the genetics of, of genetics. what they need to bring up. Yeah. It's genetics. You, you, you know, you cannot, you cannot train for perfectly diamond shaped calves you can't you can't do that you either have it or you don't so yeah. you, not everybody has the sweep in the quads and stuff that's one of those things you either have or you don't you can uh -huh. you know yeah you can it's it's primarily the the, the vastus lateralis you know but some people just have a valid a, a lateralis that just naturally sweeps and some people don't uh -huh. so so if you don't have that then uh that's that's something that you, well you can get your legs bigger but you're just not going to get that that big sweep out there on the right. side Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and, and so all you all you can do, you can't you can't change the, the, the structure of your muscles. All you can do is just enhance what you have, yeah. whatever, whatever, wherever that g genetic profile is, you can enhance it to the best of your ability. I will never have diamond shaped calves. OK. Yeah. I can still I want calves that don't take away from my physique. Anybody can train for that. You yeah. Know, anybody can train for that. You know, yeah. you're not, you know, if your if your legs are subpar, you're not going to turn around and, get, and train for legs like Tom Platts. You know, yeah. something like that. You know, it, but but what you can do is that you can bring your legs up to where they don't actually take away from the physique. 
You sure. Know? That's the deal. Everybody can do that. Yeah. So I want to back up because, uh, you know, uh, back, back up to what you said about you can train, you know, hamstrings on a day and quads on a day and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I've done that in the past, uh, which is awesome. And a lot of, a lot of guys do that. I mean, they have separate days for that. Uh, so let's go, let's like, we go into the hamstrings, you know, there's, I mean, that there's more exercises for the quads than the hamstrings, correct? I mean, all together. It's a, uh, yeah. I mean, well, be, be, because you can do with, with quads, you can do both isolated and compound moves, mm -hmm. you know, and for hamstrings for the most part you can do isolation moves but that that deadlift you know it can be you can the way i do it it, it can be a bit of a compound move too so sure. you've got you've got deadlifts that you can do for compound as a compound move to build up those hamstrings of course you're not gonna be isolating the hamstrings you're gonna be hitting both the hams and the glutes but for the most part you just got primarily isolation moves for, for those for those hamstrings and stuff so uh so so basically like if you were to split those days up would you do something like, would it sound something like this? Would it be like quads and, and uh, calves and then hamstrings and glutes? Would that sound about right? I That's that's the way I would do it because the thing yeah. about it is this, quads and calves tend to complement each other more, you know, they tend to complement each mother, each other more. And, and glutes and hamstrings tend to complement each other more. So you're right. If I were to break it down, I would go quads and calves you know, and then I would go glutes and hams. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's, that's interesting. So, uh, uh, doing that and let's say, you know, that's how you were training and you're splitting your body parts up that, the, that, you know, that way, uh, what would the volume you'd want to look for? What would that, what would that look like, you know, for, well, for I mean, it, training that way? You know, I mean, I, I, I always, um, I um I I like to well right now we're doing the twenties so sure it's twenties for everything, but that initial salvo of of reps you know I probably want to probably get no more than maybe about eight mm -hmm. to ten tops ten I'm like almost toast you know what I mean sure and then I can drop in and just keep going from there and stuff you know so yeah huh so, okay and but, would you uh, go ahead. But you're talking about mul multiple sets, like the standard way that most people would do it. Yeah. I'm looking for somewhere in between about, I'd say about eight to fifteen reps. Okay, and and multiple sets of the same exercise. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So fifteen being the high number, and 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 eight being the low number, and you can throw tens and twelves in there. So sure, somewhere in that neighborhood. That may that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh. So splitting the splitting those days up, would you do like quads, calves one day, and the next day do hams, or would you would you do throw another body part in there like a push? Uh, I, would probably, I, would probably, I would probably throw something else in the middle just just for the recovery. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know, I mean you st you're still hitting legs. I mean, because I mean if you're doing like leg press, depending how your feet are on there, you're you're still using some of your hamstrings on some uh, you know right, on some right. quad it's, exercises. It's kind of it's kind of working synergistically. With yeah, quads and stuff, you know. So yeah, so you you still got to kind of give it a little bit of rest so so you can come back and hit it again. Yeah, without, yeah, I just, yeah, destroying it. Is, is is I I I train legs all in one day. What I'm saying is that you know the way as a, the, the the breakdown of the legs is just as extensive as the upper body, and you can literally you know use break those four muscle groups down and train them on separate days. You know, they can have their own training day, but most people train their legs all together. You know, they'll do quads and and and, and hams and glutes and calves. So, yeah. yeah, and that's how we do it. I like that way. Uh, makes sense to me. But I know it's like a lot of the a lot of the top guys, a lot they, they split those days up. I've seen, you know, uh, for the most part in their routines and stuff like that. But they have all the time in the world, too. <laughs> <laughs> They yeah, have... <laughs> you know, that, that 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 makes that makes a difference. It, it makes really a does. difference, yeah. So, uh, uh, lacking body parts, like uh, I was talking about, you know, when I my calves, you know, it's always been a, a a lacking body part for me, and I and I brought them up to the point where they're not taking away from my physique, like you were saying, right? Uh, but I want to kind of talk about, you know, uh, uh, how to bring those up, how we do it, you know, and 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 stuff like that. So, uh, if it's quads, obviously you. 
you know, I don't know if you can hit quads every single day to bring up something like no, that. You don't want to do that. No, no but, but the, but the calves are a smaller muscle and we're walking on them all day long. So they're used to weight anyway, you know, and they recover quicker because it's a smaller muscle. So, uh, so how, how would we, how would you bring up, uh, calves if you needed some calves? The, the, the way I, the way I've brought them up, um, so far, I mean, it's just dogged consistency. That's all it is. I do a heavy set of calves, one heavy set of calves after, after every workout, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, and it's to the point now to where I don't have to do that that much anymore, but I still train my calves. So I don't do them after every workout, but I do manage to get uh, two to three sessions in per week. Mm -hmm. I will hit my calves, you know, two to three times per week, as opposed to just one session, like doing legs. So I'll, I'll train calves during legs. And then I'll train calves two other days during the week. Okay. Whereas before, you know, before my calves would really come up, you know, I would hit a heavy set of calves every every workout. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I did too. And, and it worked for me. And, and th that's what did it. And that's, that's what, you know, that's what brought my abs up, you know, is, is, um, do just, I, they're part of my auxiliary lifts. And after every workout, I would do, uh, anywhere between 50 to a hundred crunches, you know, uh -huh every training day you know and i train five days a week i do the same thing with calves you know train calves i would train for a while train calves five days a week this is the first time in a while i haven't really been training calves five days a week you know i think they're to the point now that would they definitely i looked at a lot of the, the the film uh on 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 me competing and stuff and clearly no you know, your calves are not a problem yeah, yeah they're, they're <laughs> yeah they're, they're not so yeah i can go down to like I said, I'm doing three days a week now, but for somebody who's got weak calves, I mean, really weak calves where it's actually taken away from the physique, you're looking at pics of yourself or you're looking at videos of yourself and your eyes are just gravitating towards your calf yes. because you're like, like, man, my calves are freaking small. You know, you just, just, it's, it's going to take time and it's going to take persistence, but um, I'd say heavy set of calves after every single workout. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. And you know, uh, before I before I met with you and stuff, you know, I I, uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't think you could do uh, an exercise every day. But and and I, you know, how long we've been together now, I brought my calves up to where it's not taking away from my physique, and that's exactly how I did it. But just doing a set every day mm -hmm. and heavy set, you know, it's good. I, I think the I calves said. respond from heavy weight. I think mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and volume so, and volume, volume. Yeah, so yes, so, but it's a such a stubborn muscle you know, for a lot of people, a lot of people have that problem. And then you got other people that don't even lift weights and they got perfectly, perfectly shaped calves. You know? And big calves too. And big calves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of strange how that works. Uh, and it, I mean, to the point where if they were to train calves, how much bigger would they get? You know, they wouldn't, uh, they, they wouldn't need to do much. They wouldn't they need to do much. Yeah. 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 They wouldn't but, need uh, I mean, it's just such a stubborn muscle group. It's probably one of the most stubborn muscle groups. If you have a problem in that area, then all of the muscle groups, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Calves? Yeah. I mean, cause I even, calves. yeah, because I am mean, even like forearms, you know, if that was stubborn for a person, you're using your forearms and every push movement, you're using it on every workout, basically. And, you, you know, it's a lot like the calves. You can use it every day and, uh, and they'll, they will eventually, eventually grow, you know, uh, but yeah, so the calves. <laughs> persistence. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's consistency. Yeah. Yeah, persistency, okay. consistency. Yes. So, who, in your opinion, had the best uh, had the best legs? Well, well, you know that that's 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 a kind of a hard question to answer. I mean, it. It's like right, right when 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 you, when when I think I'm thinking about people that are just that were just notorious for their legs, and like Tom Platts comes into mind. Yeah, you know, Tom I mean, Platts. You know, he comes into mind. You know, uh, uh, there. You know, um, um, I'm looking at some of the uh, some of the Olympias. Believe it or not, none Olympias were really, really, really known for legs, though. Yeah. Maybe 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 Dorian and 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 Jay Cutler. You know. But um, but and and uh, I'll throw in some I'll throw in Phil he, Ronnie Coleman, you know. But but a lot of the Olympians really weren't like notorious for their leg development, you know. Really all, most of them had great backs, but but not yeah. all of them had, not all of them had like great 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 legs and stuff, you know. But the thing about it is, just their legs definitely didn't take away from their physique stuff. Sure, sure. 
See, my my mind first thing that comes up is a uh, Lee Priest. That guy had some killer killer legs. Yeah, he, <laughs> for he, his physique. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's today today's pros, unlike I would say back in the seventies. Oh. You know, I mean, I, I really can't I can't think of anybody other than. And he was still, but other than Johnny Jackson, and I think that's that was genetics. Mm -hmm. You know, his 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 upper body definitely overshadowed his legs. Yeah, you know? and I'm pretty and I'm pretty sure the guy is strong as an ox. I'm pretty sure he squatted like crazy, did leg extension. Like it's just it just part of his genetic makeup. It, it just yeah. was there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's such a uh, yeah. That's that's interesting that you said that uh, a lot of the Olympias because Jay Cutler had the quad stomp and he was kind of. But you're you're right. It was mainly backs. I mean, uh, uh, that people are well known for is, is backs. <laughs> How big their back is. Uh, yeah, uh, but, but then you got Ronnie this, and glutes, glutes and hams. I mean, glutes, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's no you, you really can't say you can't say Ronnie's legs blew everybody's legs away and stuff or. Dorian's legs or Arnold's legs or even even Phil Heath's you know I mean legs you know it's it's almost par for the course to have legs I guess that's been just drummed in us over the decades of doing bodybuilding and stuff you know decades of bodybuilding and and especially in the 80s you started putting more and more and more emphasis on leg development I mean I was reading an article and this guy his name was Dale Adrian he beat Robbie Robinson out of the Mr. America and 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 he won on his legs. Now, really, you know, I'm 15 at the time, you know, 14. So this seems almost foreign to me because, you know, bodybuilding back then was mostly upper body. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you still had legs and stuff, but it was it was mostly upper body. So it, it was an article that I read in Iron Man magazine on Dale Adrian, and it was specifically on legs. And I think it was the, the probably the first article that I'd ever read you know, in my bodybuilding career concerning someone that was really known for their leg development. His name was Dale Adrian, you know, huh. you know and, and and he beat Robbie Robinson out for the, uh, I think it was Mr. America, something like that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Let's talk about some exercises now. Uh, 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 I mean, there's a, there's a lot of them. Uh, I mean, just, just to let everybody know well, what we have out there for, for the quads, for the hands. Right, right. So and, 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 and actually it's it's surprisingly simple, actually. It I is, mean, yeah. For the most part. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna apply the principle of recruiting most maximum fiber recruitment and stuff, but basically, I mean, for your quads, you know, you're talking about which is on par with shoulders. You 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 with quads, you can do isolation move and you can do compound moves, you know. So compound moves being leg presses, squats, you know, hack squats. Isolation moves being leg extensions, you know, I mean, yeah. and so there you have it. And depending on, you know, I tend to be fairly even. If I'm going to do two leg extensions, I'm going to do take two leg presses, you know, you know, or I'll do a three to three to two ratio, three leg presses to two leg to two leg extensions, you know, and um and and so that's basically with quads. That's basically all you're going to do either hack squat, some kind of a hack squat. I mean, a hack squat squat leg presses and the thing about it is this if your loads are dialed in it doesn't matter whether you're squatting or leg pressing it really doesn't matter you should really yeah, no. off on fibers and stuff that, that that's the main when you're dialed in you're dialed in yeah. that that that's the bottom line right there now as far as hamstrings go you know and it, but, but let me and let me back up a little bit you know because the thing about it is this quad sweeps you know nothing complements a front double on bicep like a good quad sweep Yep. You know, and nothing, 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 nothing uh, complements an abdominal thigh like a good squat sweep. When you turn that knee out, step that knee out, you turn that knee out, you get that nice little sweep on that yep. quad. You know, I mean, you, you can't, you can't, it, that's hard to beat. Yeah. You know, um, um, on, on your side pose, the side chest, side triceps, where you have that nice dense separation between the quads and the hams, you know, and you get that, you, you get the, uh, you can see the fascia. You yeah, know, the stripes on the side there. I mean, you know, all that's coming from leg extensions, leg presses, squats, hack squats. You know, that's what all that stuff's coming from. Hamstrings. When I'm thinking hamstrings, you know, 
I'm thinking, first thing I'm thinking is, there's two things you're going to think about. You're going to think about how you look from the very back and you just want to want those cables running down your legs and stuff. And the one that my favorite, how it's going to look on the side. When you dog on, bring that knee up and you just have that dog on hamstring hang down low and stuff, you know? I mean, now you're talking leg curls and of the, of the variety, lying leg curls, seated leg curls, standing leg curls. And then you've got deadlifts, you know, uh, for, for hamstrings, really load that up and stuff. And you can really nail those hamstrings along with your glutes and stuff. But, and depending on how you're training, like if you hit your, if you start up with a lot of heavy leg curls and then you're going to deadlifts, you're definitely going to feel the quads. I mean, the, the hamstrings more, you're going to feel the glutes because it's going to target both of them, you know? Yeah. So you, you kind of, you kind of pre-exhausted with the hand, with the leg curl. And then you go into that deadlift to really nail those doggone uh, hamstrings and stuff. Yeah. You know? And of course the glutes, you know, now, you know, deep squats, if you're doing really deep squats, you're doing really deep leg presses and stuff. You may not have to worry that much about the glutes and stuff. I can't because my knees, I can't go really deep and stuff anymore and stuff. I got to keep it. I got to keep time under tension. Can't do a lot of stuff because, well, my doc says I was supposed to have, you know, artificial knees, but at this point, but I'm still rocking and rolling and stuff yeah. <laughs> like that, doing what I'm doing. So I do a lot of time under tension and stuff, you know, but, um, but, um, but, um, yeah, it's, 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 um, it's, where was my, what, what was I going with that? Let me see here. <laughs> <laughs> about, about the hamstrings and, the, uh, uh, or you were talking about the glutes actually. Right. Active, glute glutes. exercises. Yes. Active yes. That's what yeah. I was talking about. So, so basically with the glutes, like I said, if you're going deep and stuff, you know, yeah, you're going to be targeting the glutes. But, you know, pelvic lifts, weighted pelvic lifts, I do them on the machines or you can do them on the Smith machine. You know, those are great for the glutes and stuff, especially if you hit them straight on from the back, you know, and and I do, I make sure I do a, a heavy set of glutes after every workout as part of my auxiliaries. Abduction. Oh, okay. Yeah, hip abduction is another good one for the glutes and stuff, you know. Yeah. And 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 I like those because when you hit that side pose and you throw that heel up, you know, and you sit on that quad, those glutes, you just feel those glutes come out. And watching film, I can see the stripes going down the side of my glutes. And it's like and and I feel that when I do that that hip abduction, I'm actually feeling with that. I can actually picture that in my mind because the feeling that I'm getting is targeting that area. It's right on that area that I'm feeling and stuff. So, yeah. So, basically, you're talking, you know, leg press, leg extensions, leg curls, deadlifts, and, uh, and and pelvic lifts with an abduction. And, of course, with calves, calves is a lot of volume. I like to do calf raises. I like them doing seated. I like them standing. I do them primarily standing. Sometimes I use the leg press machine. But the thing that there's, there's, you know, you see a lot of people when they turn their toes out, you know, I mean, they turn their heels out to mm -hmm. hit the outer and they turn their heels in to hit the inner, you know, and you can do that. It's kind of awkward for me, but you know, you can keep your feet flat, you know, and what you do is if you just apply the pressure, if you just push off on the big toe, you're going to hit that medial uh, gastroc, that medial calf, you know, and, but if you shift your weight and push on the pinky toes, and you're going to start hitting that outer calf, you know? So instead of like turning my heels in or out, I'll just shift my weight, you know? And like I said, if I want to hit that inner gastroc, I'm pushing off on my big toe, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, uh, so uh, oh, I was going to, I was going to say something. I'm sorry. I'm tired. It's Sunday oh. night. <laughs> uh, uh, legs. So, uh, Man, I just totally lost what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll, I'll come I've back. Been there. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, with the calves, uh, I brought mine up and stuff, and, and and it's like you you taught me, you know, to on the ball on the ball of your foot and push with your uh, big toe, and that worked that worked for me. Work yeah. great for me. And I can feel the contraction really well doing that too, which is yeah. important. And I think uh, before my calves actually came up, I wasn't ever able to actually feel the contraction of my calves. 
know, mm-hmm. I just go through the motions, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it seems like once I was able to feel the contraction of, of my calves, I was able to actually work my calves and put shape to them. Uh, uh, I mean, for me, I don't know if that's like that for other people or, or anything like that. I guess, you know, just the mind muscle connection thing mm-hmm. took a little while to get in there, but, uh, but that helped with my calves. I mean, cause you really got to get in there. I mean, if it's a stubborn muscle, you really got to get your head in there and work that muscle. Yeah. You know, uh, it just seems that way. So, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, just that consistency, that consistency is, is everything. I mean, everybody can do it once, but, but can you do it about another hundred times? You know what I mean? Yeah. Different between yeah. three push ups and, and, and 60 push ups. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Oh, I know where I was going to go. Uh, uh, feet stance, like with the leg press, uh, for example. What is it again? Uh, your stance with your feet. Yeah. Where you put your feet on, on the, right. on the, on the panel can we talk a little bit about that and what what areas you know whether inner or outer what you're kind of i mean you can put your legs up higher push with your heels you know push with your whole feet you know what i mean are you, I, now, are, you, are, you, are you talking about are you talking about using a leg press for yeah. hamstrings as opposed to quads or are you yeah, talking about cats exactly like uh yeah it's exactly what i'm talking about so uh okay okay yeah, so so the different places you can put your feet to work the different parts of your legs. Right, right, right. Uh, so so yeah, a lot of, a lot of people don't. I had a, a I knew you could do it, but I never really I never really put it to a lot of application until I trained with my training partner back in the day. His name was Turk, Turk Fickling, and and uh, and and Turk would um, would use leg presses for his hamstrings. Had tremendous hamstrings, you know, and he would step up high on the leg press to where the heel, the, to where the feet are slightly over the edge, you know. I would say right at about the ball of the foot, you know, to where when you're pushing off, you're feeling more, you're pushing off more with your heel than your entire foot. It's almost exclusively your heel, you know. And uh, and you know, I I did it. I've done it a few times. But I think we we had to attack that for about six months or so, and um and after about after my mind after I had that mind muscle connection, I was really 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 feeling those. You yeah. Know? And, and uh and 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 I still do them from time to time, you know. I mean some some stuff some stuff just really effective, and then some things you just got a flavor for. You know, I think it's just one of those things I don't really have a flavor for, but that doesn't mean that it's not effective. Yeah, you know, it's very, very, very effective. And like I said, from time to time, I'll find myself doing it. It's definitely one of my second tier exercises to where if something goes down, one of my main movers that I can't do anymore because I'm like maybe injured or something like that or something's going on or the machine is broke and I need to get a replacement. You best believe I'm doing that doggone leg press for the for the hamstrings and stuff. I already know you turned me on to that with because I had problems with my hamstrings getting bound up and just got, you know, like they just <laughs> get bound up like, like like cords or something. I, I need a deep tissue massage. But uh-huh. at, at any rate, uh, you know, uh you turned me on to those and I've done them ever since. I don't do them every leg workout, but uh those are excellent. I mean, uh what I do is I'll put a two by four up on the uh up on the pad so okay. that my foot's actually at an angle. And okay. then I'll, I'll, it'll take me a couple pumps and then I'm feeling my hamstrings with my hands while I do that. And then I can, once I engage them and, and I just pump them and it, yeah, it's uh it, it's great for the hamstrings. I mean, yeah, it pumps yeah. them right it, up. It, it, is, <laughs> it is, it is, it is a good one. And so, yeah, if I have my prime movers and stuff and it's, it's mainly out of preference, you know, and as long as I keep those loads dialed in and stuff, you know, they're going to work for me and stuff. But like I said, you know, stuff happens. You know, yeah. you get injured or, or or the machine breaks or something like that, you know, and you got to go to an alternative and stuff. And that's definitely on my short list of yeah. alternatives and stuff. So it's that, a good that, one. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then I, I want to kind of talk about like the, the outer suite for the quads. Uh, uh-huh. So we, we, like we what, how we do it, we have our feet together. You know, uh, uh, I, I kind of want to ex- talk a little bit about that compared to a wide stance. So wide stance, you're going to use hamstrings glutes you're going to use quads you know depending on where you're at in your angle uh uh so on and so yeah, forth why yeah. are we doing it that way why are we why are we doing it close so i and, and that's just it but then here's the thing about it me and you we really don't need to do we don't have to do close yeah. because we've already got pretty prominent quad sweeps you know what i mean yeah. you know but 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 um i really feel that in the quad as opposed to 
if I get just a closer stance just inside shoulders width, you know, I still feel my, I'm, it doesn't matter what I really do. I'm going to feel my, my quads are going to get pumped, but yeah. I def, there's definitely a difference when I have my feet together, you know, and I'm setting down low on that platform and stuff, you know, and, uh, and I'm really feeling that in the, in, in, in the quads, the lateralis in particular. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I do too. That's why I like doing, I'll do, I'll do a uh, wide and I do that actually is what I'll do. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, and you're right. Any, if you have your feet anywhere on the leg press, you're going to hit your, you know, your whole leg's going to be filled with blood. I mean, it, it, it pumps everything up, but, uh, and, and people that, 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 that aren't known for sweeps, people that don't have sweeps or people that just have problems with their laterals, they may not feel it to the extent that we feel it. You see what I'm true. saying? That's true. Because you know, they, 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 you know, to me, and body, a strong muscle group is something that responds very, very readily to stimulus. You know, that's what I mean? true. Yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, with me, you know, I can say my quads are strong because I really don't have to do that much to get them pumped. You know what I mean? You yeah. know. So yeah, but but not everybody's like that though. You know. Okay. Yeah, I totally get that. Like I was talking about the calves earlier when I finally was able to c feel the contraction and, right. and and put my mind. In. You're absolutely right about that because my back's the same way. You know, well, you always ask, you got to pump yet? I'm like, yeah, I got to pump first exercise. You know, <laughs> first and, exercise and, and, I do. And another thing with 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 you with shoulders, you don't really have to. You don't really have to um, pre exhaust to 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 feel your shoulders. No, you can actually start out with shoulder presses and you're hitting your delts. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You yeah. know, we we still pre exhaust and stuff, but I know that that there have been there have been lots of times we should actually start out with heavy shoulder presses, and you know, you don't really have to pre exhaust your 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 delts are just that responsive to yeah. stress to stimuli. That's 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 what I'm saying basically. Yeah, and but yeah, unlike for me, the chest is a little different. The chest. Right. I, I mean, if I go in there and I do bench press right out, yeah, I'm going to feel it. Yeah, I'm going to get something out of it, but I'm going to get more out of it if I do a fly first, period. You know, right. I, if I do a heavy fly first, I'm going to get more out of that press when it comes up. And, and, with, and with me, it doesn't matter. I can yeah. start up with bench press. I can start with incline presses. You know, I'm going to get a full chest the first time around. I don't, I don't, I, I, I start out with flies. I do that because I still think that I'm getting some benefit from that, from that pre-exhaust. Yeah, but I'd say about 80% of the time I'm doing some type of pre-exhaust. Every now and then I'll start with a press first, you know, every right. now and then, you know, maybe I can few, I can move a few extra fibers, some extra weight. I can activate a few more fibers and stuff. Okay. All right. Fine and dandy. But, but for the most part, I'm still, I am, I am a, a, a pre-exhausting and stuff, but like I said, you know, to embody, but the strength of the muscle is not so much it's actual strength. It's how easily and how readily it it responds to stress you know what i mean mm -hmm. so so yeah yeah to me that that's that's my idea of a strong muscle group so uh it's kind of off topic well kind of kind of but not really uh because i like what you're saying there uh uh for example you know i i was i never had a butt i never had chest i was flat chested flat butted all through growing up you know I had quads, I had, you know, I had my shoulders, I had stuff like that, but like my chest, I had nothing. And I remember uh very first, yeah, you know, year I was working out, uh, I'd do a bunch of chest exercises and all that. And then somebody come up, touch my chest, and I'm like, what are you doing? It's because it's not sore. I was never using my chest, you know. So it's like you have to be able to actually you gotta gain some size in your muscle group, but you really gotta get your mind in there for that muscle group to start growing. And then once you do, then the possibilities are endless on your growth, I think, right? For the most part. But for, 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 for the most part and stuff, you know, I mean, get, get, getting that, that, that sometimes you got to go through that neural learning. That's what they call yeah. it, neural learning and stuff, you know, and, and once that gets done and, and the body, body finally says, okay, I, I see what, I see what's going on. I see what, what, what we're trying to do now. Yeah. And, 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 and it gets in sync and then, yeah, the rest of it's gravy. Yeah. Especially in compound movements, like, like bench press, for example, like I was using my triceps and my shoulders. That's what I was doing. You know, I wasn't yeah, really yeah. using any of my chest at that point. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, I had compound, no chest. <laughs> yeah. Most people have problems with the compound moves more so than the isolation moves. Isolation yeah. moves, uh, they're pretty much, pretty much cut and dry and stuff. You know, I mean, you know, for the most part and stuff. So, 
You know, yeah. arm curls, you, you're doing arm curls, you, you're, you're going to feel your biceps. It's, it's, oh, yeah. it's not, nothing else you're really going to be feeling and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to wrap this up for today. Uh, you want to do chest next week? Sure. Chest will be next we got, week. We got chest and then we got arms. Absolutely. We can maybe do like arms and abs or something like that because we got sure. abs too, but uh, yeah. probably throw that in with uh, arms. Yeah, chess is going to be a fun one because uh, I got a lot to say about chess, and I'm sure you do too. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys, uh, we're wrapping this up. See you next week and uh, have a good week. And you got any comments? Throw it in the comment section. Like, That's and subscribe. It right there. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good to go.